Last one I wanted to cover was another potentially useful target, but also a narrow one, and that is the V600E mutation in BRAF. Um, small numbers, but uh, Dr. Planchard and colleagues talked about the combination of dabrafenib or tefinlar with trametinib and showed some encouraging results. Uh, Jean-Charles, what did you think? Can you give a brief overview of the highlights and is this enough to make us want to routinely test for and treat these patients as a separate entity? I think uh, BRAF V600E should be tested and should be treated as a separate entity. Uh, as Lina say, it might be rare, but it's there, and it's an actionable target now, and you cannot just uh, dismiss it. One to two percent of our patients have BRAF V600E mutations, the monotherapy darafinib was 30% objective response rate and a disease control rate of 56%. The combination of darafinib plus trametinib doubles numbers, basically. The objective response rate is 63%. The disease control rate is 88%. We will see how much is the median PFS. For the monotherapy, it was uh, in the range of six months. Here, we hope it's going to be longer. So, I mean, to me, it's, it's very clear. I mean... Uh, if I have a BRAF V600E, I know that chemo is going to give me 30% response rate. Here I have a combination of oral compounds who's going to give me 63% response rate. So I think this is, this is very promising. We know that there are other trials with vemurafenib and other combos, but I really think uh, this, is, this is good news. A very small slice of uh, non-small cell lung cancer, but since the disease is so frequent, right. it's still so many what percentage about? 1% to 2% okay. of the non-small cell lung cancer patients have BRAF Mutation. Are you practically able to deliver this kind of yeah. approach? Well, in France, we are blessed by the fact that we have a national uh, approach where everyone is tested at no cost, and BRAF is a mandatory, I mean, it's a test that is, I won't say it's mandatory, but it's a reflex subcortical testing, so everyone is getting BRAF at the same time that they get the EGFR and ALK, uh, and that's important. And that's why France was one of the top recruiters. Uh, mm -hmm. Lena, what do you think, and do you think that are we moving so readily toward multiplex or next-gen sequencing testing that it's really minimal effort to look for eight or ten or more potential driver mutations as to look for two or three? Are we on the cusp or at that point where we are now able to test for the very narrow slivers of the pie? I think we are. I mean, I wish we had a program uh, like the national program in France. I think that would make things a lot easier. But we are doing it piecemeal in the U.S., and it's moving kind of in spits and starts with some very, very, very broad-based next-gen sequencing and some panels being done. But I think BRAF is very easy to include because it is a standard test for melanoma. So it's being tested in all kinds of scenarios across the U.S. in a standard way by commercial companies, by academic medical centers. So it's very easy to add. I think just in, in general, you know, I, I do think it's a relevant target. I absolutely would treat patients uh, based on BRAF V600E finding, but it isn't so clear-cut as I think ALK or even exon 19 deletion EGFR is. There, you know, you needed combination therapy to really approximate some of the targeted responses we've seen in other sen settings. Monotherapy not only had a lower response rate, but a lower durability of response. And although this was a small trial as well, we've been doing the same kind of evaluation in HER2 mutant patients where there's a lot more argument of how relevant of a target is it. We have used a combination strategy there as well um, with maybe not as good, but again, somewhat similar to BRAF. And I think maybe there are other things going on that we also need to further investigate in those settings.